It's your summer. What the bird is barbecuing? Sup, jabronis. God damn it. Um, yeah, it's me, the bird, Garnet. Surprise. And I'm wearing unicorn onesie. Yes. I can tell you're impressed, as you should be. It was Kyle's request that I wear this, so he better be happy about it. Um, I'm gonna get this battle started. Music 20. Sounds like it'll be appropriate. If you've forgotten our team, what's wrong with you? But uh, if you haven't gone and paused the video right now to look at my team builder, the team I'm bringing this week is Mixed Defensive Crest, Physically Defensive Florges, uh Spike's Leader Selgor, uh, Bulky Nido Queen, uh, Sucker Punch Life Orb Gengar, and an Assault Vest Lantern for that stupid Volcanion. Oh crap, where is my pad of paper? It's under my freaking pasta. That is not ideal. He brought illegal Pokemon. You have got to be kidding me. Uh, he didn't battle spot check, did he? I'll pause until he gets back. Alright, we are back. Oh, I'm gonna put this back on. Anyway. He took forever to fix his team, and it was very, very frustrating, but I have my notepad now. Ready to go, and uh... He said he was trying to think of a set that only worked in Gen 3, which tells me there's definitely something on Nidoking, Alakazam, or the Masquerade. I don't believe it's going to be the Masquerade. I believe when it comes to the Nidoking or the Alakazam, the move that makes sense is either Psych Up or it is potentially Counter. So, I don't know. I'm just going to ride in this team and uh, see if I predicted it well enough from the team builder. He does bring Volcano on. God bless. Like, it made no sense for him not to. So, Volcanion's here. He has Archaeops is most likely his lead, I want to say. I uh, did bring Zam, which is fine. Um, he did bring Garchomp, which is really annoying because I don't. I'm not a fan. Garchomp. He also brought Mega Pidgeot, which is expected. Did he bring Ferrothorn though? Okay, he didn't bring Ferrothorn, so that's good. What have I not written down yet, Nido King? So, he did bring Ferrothorn. That's very nice for my team, because that shuts down a lot of his hazard options. Um, it's going to be a tough battle though, because he has a lot of offense for his team. Uh, lead wise, I think a Selgor is still incredibly strong uh, against the majority of his team. It matches up very, very nicely. I can get off good damage or. Potentially a spike as I don't think he's going to bring any form of hazard removal, so I think it's going to be a very very annoying battle uh, Because he has so much offense and in order for me to break it, it's going to take a lot of force Could be running Sucker Punch Unit King as well Potentially to counter my Gengar, which is fine. So it's all good. So Kyle, what are you going to lead with? I'm leading with a Zelda because it is my bona fide lead. He has chosen to lead with Flap Flap, which is his Archaeops, that's cool. So unless it's in a Scarfed, I'm not overly worried. I can automatically turn one, put it into Defeatus range as it goes for rocks. Um, I mean, I'm just assuming that I can. I'm just going to quickly type in the Calc. Um, offensive Selgor. it's going to probably show up with its... Uh, yeah, it's probably going to show it. Uh, no, I didn't... Uh, Archaeops, let's just go with offensive because Kyle doesn't know how to run defensive Archaeops. Um, so I am modest. Mild's fine. Didn't mean to click that, but it's fine. Uh, let's just say I'm holding a hard stone and say that I have Hidden Power Ice. So modest natured, Hidden Power Ice. Um, it's going to put it automatically into Defeatus range. Even if he's scarfed, I can obviously take it because I'm sashed. And if he goes for rocks, that's fine, because we get a kill, and then something else that comes in, we can put in work against. So, I think my play here is to Hidden Power Ice this Archaeops. His best play is most likely, I believe, he's going to go for rocks. He does not outspeed us, so if he goes for an attack here, we have to put him into Fetus range, so that's really, really nice. He does just go for rocks, that's completely fine by me. Um, so Archaeops is now pretty much useless. I really want to predict him to go into Volcanion here. Because he doesn't have a good switch in for HP Ice, he may want to preserve the Archaeops. Is it a bad play? Um, is it a bad play is the question. Rocks are kind of annoying for right now. 
Not really, it's only annoying for a Selgord who currently still has a Sash attack, which means I can get off pretty much two Focus Blasts against a uh, Volcanium, which means that I really lose nothing from HP Ice in here, because I'm still going to be able to get off a uh, Focus Blast against Volcanion, so I'm actually just going to go for another HP Ice, and if he leaves in Archeops, then it goes down. Okay, he decides to sack off Archeops, all he wanted to do with it apparently was get up rocks, but uh, Archeops dies to a Selgore. So this is really good because the uh, scar, uh, the sash is still intact, and he doesn't have a good switching here. But Volcanion, and if I can weaken Volcanion um, with my Selgore, that is phenomenal. I can't get rid of these hazards, unfortunately. But then again, don't really need to. I, I think my play here is definitely just going for Focus Blast. What I want to see is how I match up against the Volcanion if that is going to be his play. It is his play. Now, if it's a max HP Volcanion. Focus Blast still does a lot, and if he's not max HP, I actually have a good chance of 2KO. I think my play, honestly, is to Focus Blast here. I can spike next turn to Focus Blast again to basically bring the Volcanion down to Rocks range, which would be ideal. So I think Focus Blast is definitely my play here, so I'm going to go for it. Now hopefully I can hit. That would be great. And of course, uh, the great game that Pokemon is, is going to mean that we miss, and if he burns us here, I'm going to be really pissed off. Please don't burn us, that's not deserved. Thank- okay, good. He didn't burn us, which is really nice, because we really didn't deserve then to take that, like, damage. I could get up a spike, but I feel like a spike, guys, is not going to be worth it. I am going to choose the Focus Blast here to get damage on this Volcanion. As he has revealed Steam Eruption, I have no idea what set he is yet, but hopefully we can hit this Focus Blast. We do- this will gauge how much damage we do, so I said it should do about 35%. That is about what I'm expecting does actually a little bit more than expected, so that tells me he might not be a fully invested Volcano, which is really nice. Uh, my best play here though, guys, is going straight into Bray Wyatt, because I know that if he specs, he can't stay in. And if he is Life Orb, or uh, he's not Life Orb, but if he's Expert Belt regardless, I can take two Earth Powers. And uh, my play here, 110% is to Ice Beam. Because I could Volt Switch, and he has Nidoking plus Garchomp. No bueno for me. Ice Beam is 110% my play. He knows I can just Volt Switch out against this thing. There's no reason for him to risk his Volcano on this turn. Ice Beam is by far the appropriate play. So I'm just going to write down that a Cell Glow has died. But I, I really want to catch the Garchomp here, predicting the Volt Switch. Um, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, a Cell Glow dies to Volcanion. Which has revealed Steam Eruption, which is expected because it's a Volcanion. Um, I honestly don't see him staying in. What's the point? of taking a Volt Switch. Thank you. Please go out to the Garchomp. Please, I want to drop this thing on its neck. Scoop, is that the Garchomp? It's Alakazam. O okay. He goes into Alakazam, and we get damage on Alakazam, which is nice. I... I kind of want to go for Volt Switch, but I'm scared, guys, because he could be Skill Swap, and I don't want to heal him here. So I think my safer play, 110%, is going directly into my Cresselia. Um, I need to keep Lantern as healthy as possible to do a Volcanion on the chance that it is Specs. I want to be able to take those Earth Powers. So I'm going to go into Gobbledygook. Uh, Gobbledygook is really, really good in this matchup, by the way. Uh, phenomenal in this matchup. As he's going to... Okay. That's interesting. I mean, it's not bad. Realistically. Uh, what do I want to do here? Do I want to... Hmm... I see no reason for Alakazam to stay in unless it has Recover. Which I don't think it would. See, I I have Heal Bell on Floor, just so this doesn't really bother me too much. I honestly kind of want to predict Volcanion's coming. I, I feel like Psyshock is the play, because I don't think Alakazam can really do that much to me. Psyshock is going to hit the Nidoking hard, and the Volcanion hard, and he knows that like Crest can set up on the Zam. And Psyshock still is decent damage. Because he's going to withdraw. I'm pretty sure he's going to go on the Volcano on here. Gonzalez. He goes into Garchomp. Okay. Now, this is a free Psyshock, which is nice. That does a lot. That does a lot of damage. What I need to think about here is how important this Cresselia is going to be to me in this battle. So he knows that I could potentially... See, I really, really want to go for a Moonblast here for damage. Um... If he sets up a sub though, it's not good, and I can't allow Garchomp to set up a sub on my face. Really interesting that he went into Garchomp though. I'm going to click Moonblast, even if he's banded, I'm pretty sure I can take one. 
and get Moonblast damage off. He goes for Crunch, that's, that's fine. That's not going to do a ton unless you're banned. Which I don't think you are from that damage. I mean, maybe he is. Unless I was a crit. We can get off a Moonblast here, though, which is great. Uh, it's free damage. Does not that much. We get a special attack drop, which means jack shit. Cress is a bit weak, though, which we have to keep in mind. Definitely, though, I think... Um, I don't need Cress as much in this battle. Like, obviously... It was solid for the Zam plus the Nido King, but I think I can play around this, especially since Zam is now revealed to not be what I was expecting. I'm actually going to go straight into my Forges, because I definitely feel like, okay, if he's going to go into Nido King here, that's a fair play. Um, but other than that, this is not great. Oh, he goes into Volcano, which is also fine. This is fine. Because uh, I can go to Forges, you know. What I, obviously, he's not lefties, which is cool. And I can definitely scout here, because if I scout, and uh, if I go for a different, I can just go for a pretty safe protect here. Because you may go for Earth Power being Specs, predicting my land turn to want to come in. I can just go for a pretty safe protect on this turn, and if he does choose to predict that, I can then go for the Wish next turn, and definitely play around this thing a lot better. Really unfortunate that I uh, let my Cresselia get weak, and it could cost me later on, I don't know yet. Chooses to lock himself in a Sludge Wave. Oh, I assume he chooses to lock himself in a sludge wave. Don't know if he has. Uh, my play is definitely... Um, I could go China, but I don't know if he's locked. So, Bray Wyatt's safe. He could withdraw. He does, but if he goes in a Garchomp, I think I can play around it fine. He goes in a Kneecaps, which is the Nido King. Cool. So Nido King's a problem for my team. Cresselia was my main way of dealing with it. Um, this is where we have an issue. Because my land turn could get off an amazing hit on this thing, but it's really not worth the risk. That Focus Blast miss on Volcanion is going to be really, really unfortunate, guys, because um, if I had been able to hit that Focus Blast, we really could have been in a strong position. I probably didn't need to play Cress as recklessly. Um, I think we're in a very, very bad position, actually. Looking at the way this battle is shaping up, uh, my best way of winning is the fact that I do have a Gengar in the back. The fact that Garchomp is weakened. Realistically, all I need to do is weaken the Nido King. The thing is, if he's physical, I'm screwed. So I have to sack off my Cresselia, basically. But if I do that, I'm in a very, very bad spot. If I sack off Cresselia on this turn, um, then it's basically up to my Gengar to solo the majority of his team. And I don't really like that situation a hell of a lot. I think in order for myself to win, I have to weaken this Nido King because if it does, if it is a physical set, I think I can maybe, uh, I, I think I'm actually in a losable position here. I think because I weakened Cresselia, I'm in a very bad spot. Uh, looking at his team though, I don't think this is going to be a physical Nido King. He has Garchomp, he has Archeops, potentially it could be physical. Uh, I think with Alakazam the way it is, I think this is going to be a special attack Nido King. I actually think my best play here is to Scald, because I want to put myself in a position where Life Orb Gengar can potentially clean up this game. So as dumb as it sounds, I'm going to click Scald here to try and put myself in a winnable position. He does Sludge Wave, so that's fine. We can take this, because we have Max Fidef Assault Vest, as you'll see. Absolutely swallow it. We can now fire off a Scald, which is really, really nice to get damage off in this. Okay, we get perfect amount of damage. Can we get a burn? Okay, we are definitely back in this game now, because that means he can't kill us from here. And what I can do is preserve Lantern to still be a Volcano check. And I think my play is just to sack off my Cress. And then go into my Gengar, and then we can make some waves. I think I can pretty much win this battle, guys, from here. I actually think we have the battle won. If I can sack off my Cress, then get into my Nido Queen. And successfully set up rocks. All I, got, I think I was going to do is set up rocks with my Nido Queen. I think I can win from here. Because he let his Nido King get damaged and couldn't kill my Lantern, I think we're actually in a position now where we can win if we, if we get up rocks. Because if we get up rocks, I think Life Orb Gengar has it. He's going to slide away to kill us, that's fine. It's what we expected. It's all good. I think we're in a position where we can win. With um, with Life Orb Gengar. So what I want to check is how much damage that was. I did a lot to my lantern. 
I think what I have to do is send in... See, do I want to send in Nido Queen? I want to double in the floor just basically, because if I send in Nido Queen, I think that's my best play. Sending in Nido Queen and doubling in the floor just to ensure the Nido King dies is what I'm thinking right now. It's definitely sounding like my best play. Because I need to be able to get into mine. I need my Nido Queen. Actually, my Nido Queen has a Sugar Berry. I just remember. Let me just remind myself. Summary. I have a Sugar Berry. There is no way his Nido King can kill me here. This is my time to get up rocks. And I think then we might be able to win this game. He may even try and preserve Nido King, which would be phenomenal. He's going to slide away. That's fine. We can absolutely tank this. We are bulky as fuck. We can tank this, then get up our rocks, and that is phenomenal. If he died to poise, uh, burn this turn, that would be amazing too. He doesn't, which means I need to play the smart game here. Preserve the fact that I have a sugar berry for that mega garchomp, uh, for that garchomp in the back. And I'm going to go out to my Florges. It's definitely my best play. I'm trying to put myself in a position where I win with my Gengar, guys. That's what I'm trying to do here. He could be a Scarfed Garchomp. That's the other thing that's really worrying me. So also sending in my floor just is a bit of a risk if he goes to the wave again. He does and takes us out, which is fine. Actually, I could take this potentially. I do. Not really sure what set this Nido King was, but I just took that. So... Okay. Nido King is going to die to uh, burn. So Nido King dies to burn lantern uh, my Cresselia dies to Nido King so we're in an okay position here I think he goes into Pidgeot and honestly here he's probably just going to Mega Evolve and click Hurricane which I'm okay with to be fair I'm actually okay with that I'm more than happy dying here I'm going to go for the Moonblast for damage because this Pidgeot doesn't worry me. If it goes for U-turn, that's even better. The issue is, obviously, he's Mega Evolved now, so he outspeeds my Gengar. So, that's a problem. But if he U-turns out here, that's even better. He goes for Workup. That is, that's fine. I have Sucker Punch on Gengar. I have Lantern in the back. This is Gucci. I can go for a Fat Moonblast here on this Pidgeot and possibly put it into Gengar Sucker Punch range. That is potential Sucker Punch range. I'm not 100% sure. But the other thing is, if he doesn't have Roost, I basically put him in a position where he's going to lose his pitch up here, potentially. I'm going to Moonblast again and see what he wants to do. I'm pretty sure he's going to return and kill me. That seems like his best play. I don't know. Um, if Pidgeot goes down, again, Gengar looks good, but I don't want to reveal Sucker Punch yet. I want to reveal Sucker Punch on the Zam. That's the thing. Because... At the end of the day, he's not going to expect the Sucker Punch. <sighs> this is close, guys. This is close. I'm pretty sure I'm about to lose my Florges. He does go for the Hurricane to kill us. Does it kill us? Does kill us. Work up, which is obviously special attack and attack raising. Okay. The question is, can Lantern take one? I think Nino Queen could too, but Lantern is the specific thing that I'm looking at right now. Lantern is definitely the specific thing I'm looking at right now. So this Lantern, um, which is maximum... I'm really just looking at the HP investment of Lantern, because I'm not really too worried about a special attacking move hitting me. But uh, level 50, with 248 in there, up against a Mega Pidgeot. This is really intense right now. I'm just telling you, this is really intense. I'm going to say he's a hasty Mega Pidgeot, probably with a bit of attack investment, potentially. Uh, I'm going to say he's running Return as his attacking move, right? And let's say he's a plus one attack now because of the... Not plus two. Plus one attack because of the workup. How bad of a position are we in? So Return on that gauge does a lot, but that's because he's level 100. Dropping back down to level 50, what are we looking at? Okay, so Return is a roll, potentially, if he has it. Lantern is at about half health. Return, if it is plus one, uh, is doing a lot to me. But that, I think, yeah, it's, it's a definite roll right now to kill me. So the question is, 
Can a full HP Nido Queen take a plus one hit? I don't have enough time to do this. I need to go into Lantern and pray that I can live a plus one return. What I'm going to check now is if my Nido Queen with max bulk can potentially take a Hurricane. Um, probably, maybe? I'm going to Lantern. Here's the thing. If he doesn't have return, and even if he does have return, it's still a roll from the calcs that I've done. Because obviously with my Assault Vest, I can live any normal hit. But that's not what I'm worried about. I am worried about return on me. So the thing is, I have 90 HP left, and they're showing me that no matter what here, I think my Lantern is dead if he has return. So I have to basically hope that this Mega Pidgeot is not rocking return right now. And uh, my play is just to Volt Switch the hell out of here. He has Hidden Power Ground. We should be able to live this because we are Max Spadef Assault Vest. That's what I'm talking about, Bray Wyatt. That is what I am talking about. Okay, so Florgis dies to Pidgeot. But Pidgeot dies to Lantern. Now, here's the thing. If I go into my Gengar, he could potentially go into his Scarfed Garchomp. At that point, I can sack off my Lantern to get into my Nidoqueen, and that's good. So I think that's my play. So go into Gengar, and if he goes into Zam, I have the Sucker Punch. And I think that'll bait him really nicely. So I'm going to go to Gengar. And I'm going to hope he's not a Scarfed Garchomp. That's, that's definitely how I'm playing this right now. If he uses a Scarf Garchomp, I go 110% into my Lantern to sack it. I then go into my Nidoqueen, and I basically get a kill myself. And it's going to come down to if the Sugar Berry on Nidoqueen can come in clutch. If it can kill that Scarf Garchomp, at this point, Volcanion is the least of my problems. He goes in a scoop. Okay, so depending on this Xan, I have done the calcs for this exact moment of my life. Of when a Gengar that was hasty natured. I believe it was hasty. If he has Sucker like Punch too, this is kind of hilarious. I don't think he does. He knows that he outspeeds. And he knows that I put myself in a really bad position. So he thinks, oh, he's just going to, you know, probably switch out here. Or whatnot. But the thing is, I do have the Sucker Punch. And I just need to know if it can kill for me. It's all I care about in this world right now is if my level 50 Gengar has a chance against this level 50 Alakazam. So Sucker Punch does 77.6 to 93.8. Can we get it? Can we get him? This is game changing if we can get this. We hit it. Come on. Yes! Yes! We got him! Alright! Alakazam dies to Gengar. Holy shit. Okay. So if he goes into Garchomp here, we can sack off Lantern and win the game. I think if he's a Scarfed Garchomp, there is no way we can't win here. Because of the damage that my Cresselia was able to get off with Moonblast, I think we've got ourselves now into a winnable position. If he goes into Volcanion, he will die. Uh, even if this is Scarf Volcanion. Oh, wait. If he's Scarf Volcanion. Ooh. That is something I have not thought through. That's uh, that's something I need to calc right now. I have actually not thought about Scarf Volcanion at all. That is so dumb. But how much speed would he need to outspeed a Gengar? I feel like he'd have to be timid. If he was Choice Scarfed, okay, let's just put this into theory. If he was Choice Scarfed, he could potentially, if he was a modest nature, get up to 183, which would outspeed Gengar. If he was modest natured Scarfed, he would outspeed Gengar. Question is, how much does Steam Option? So Steam Option would kill me. The question now I want to know is how much is the Life Orb Sucker Punch? It will not do enough to kill this Volcanion. This is now a serious problem. If he is a Choice Scarf Volcanion, guys, we may just lose this battle. 
Cause Sucker Punch is definitely actually. If he's a choice guard volcano, there's no way he's running that much HP. Remove that shit. There's no way he's running that much HP. Sucker Punch, I still am looking at this and thinking it's not a kill. <sighs> Cause I have the Shooker Berry. I think my play, if he is Scarf, then I just lose. My play is to click Shadow Ball and hope he's not Scarf. Or he misses Steam Eruption. He's not Scarf. This should kill, and I think we have the game confirmed. It does kill. Gengar, you are a monster. So Volcanion dies to Gengar. So this puts us in a great spot, because if he's a Scarf Garchomp, there's no move that he can go for here. Barring maybe Outrage, we could kill my Nido Queen from here. And if he is not Scarfed, I have the Icy Wind. That's all I need to do is click Icy Wind. He could be Yachi. Do I, I... I still click Icy Wind. What am I talking about? If he's Scarfed, I still win. We connect with the Icy Wind. Will this give us a 3-0 today? You betcha it does. Your Tampa Bay Frogadiers picking up another win here. Gengar, late game. The Boogeyman came in so clutch in this battle. So three kills late game to Gengar. An early kill for a Selgore. Those rocks were great. Kyle, man, like, man, that was insane. I thought when I missed that Focus Blast early game, it was over for me. Because, guys, if I had hit that Focus Blast, that Volcano the next time it came in, when I got those rocks up, would have died to rocks. That's the thing. If I had got that Focus Blast hit on, that Volcano wouldn't have even been an issue. All it would have left was his Garchomp, and that would have meant that if he was Scarfed, even a Scarfed Outrage could not kill my Nidoqueen, because as you saw, I put in a ton of bulk into my Nidoqueen. I had Lantern in the back as a sack, but in the end, guys, Gengar with three kills, a kill to a Selgore, two kills again for Bray Wyatt the Lantern in his second game in a row. Your Tampa Bay Frogadi has recorded a 3 0 victory. We now go to 12 and zip differential, a plus 12 differential. 4-0 for the season. I am so... I can't believe we just won. I literally thought we were in a position where we could not win that game. But I I just... I don't even know. The Unicorn Munzee saved the day. I am... God, I need to take my glasses off for a second. I am just... Oh my god. That battle was so ridiculous. How did I win 3-0? Uh, I think the big factor was Lantern. The fact that Lantern lived that Hidden Power Ground was massive. The Max for Death Assault Vest came in so clutch. Living that hit and killing Mega Pidgeot basically won us the game, because I don't think a Sucker Punch from Gengar from there would have killed a Mega Pidgeot. But then again, I could... Above me, I could be wrong. Uh, at level 50, how much was Gengar's Life Orb Sucker Punch? Actually, it was close. It was close. I don't know. It was very close. But you know what, guys? At the end of the day, we get a 3-0 victory. We are now 4-0 with a plus 4 differential. This is insanely great subs. And last time we started, guys, we were 2-2 two two at the start of the season. So knowing that we're 4-0 is fantastic. Next week, though, is possibly our biggest challenge yet against Choice CJ, the last guy I haven't played in my division. If I beat him, I'm 5-0 halfway through the season. That would be phenomenal. There has never been a player in the uh, PMC to go undefeated for an entire season. Maybe we can be that guy. I am still that ending. I need to know what his sets were. I need to know what he was planning to do, because I think he was planning to use, like, Psych Up Alakazam or something. But that was insane in the membrane. Hats off to Kyle. Honestly, if the Nidoqueen came in, he probably still would have died. It was a roll if Nidoqueen died to Hurricane, depending on the Pidgeot set. But, oh my god, I can't believe... I made some ballsy-ass plays. Staying in with Lantern against Nidoking won me the game because he went for Sludge Wave and I went for Skull, got the burn. Nidoking slaughtered my team. I made a terrible play staying in with Cresselia against Garchomp. That was silly. Very, very silly um, in the long run because Cresselia actually dealt with a lot of his team really nicely, so that was bad on my part. But you know what? It's been half an hour of watching this. Holy hell. As I said, 4-0. Plus 12 differential. We move on, and I just can't believe it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What was your favorite part of this battle? Are you as gassed as I am? The Boogeyman was only in one game previous to this matchup, and he didn't get to even use his set 
because he was freaking critted by Mega Altaria, but he showed his worth today. Three kills. This is also actually a bit of a swan song final battle for Kalisto the Assault World because I will be announcing soon that I am making three important transactions. I actually am going to be dropping a Selgor, Heatran, and Braviary. I know, shocking, but trust me, I am picking up some fire Pokemon to support my team for the upcoming weeks, but you will find out about that soon. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I am the Verd. The Verd Incarnate was there before, but oh, this game literally just took him out of me. Like, oh my god. These are the battles that make me enjoy Pokemon. These are literally the battles. Kyle is a great guy. I expected a fantastic battle. It was a fantastic battle. I couldn't ask for anything better, but man, this is the bird, and I'm out of this piece.